hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from candice owens and it's titled i'm done being threatened the michael johnson and diddy connection exposed you guys i'm excited for this if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about all right guys happy thursday today on the show holy smokes you're not going to believe this but there is in fact a diddy and Michael Jackson connection. Yes, the lawsuit that we have been covering and following, so much being revealed. You're not going to believe that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. And wow. I gotta be honest, I'm kind of terrified. I think this is gonna be the last day that I cover it because we're getting close to something that is very dangerous, yeah. I believe. All right, so I wasn't kidding at the top, guys. I am probably not going to cover this anymore because it is definitely getting a bit terrifying. Obviously, we covered this. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch. I believe it was Monday's episode. But yes, the Diddy lawsuit is absolutely crazy. Very crazy. Full stop. What if I told you guys that it is about to get even crazier, that there is directly a link to Michael Jackson's death? I want to be clear that when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, the lawsuits, his death, I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory when people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed, and I just thought— it just sounds too too whacked out yeah. to believe that somebody intentionally killed Michael Jackson. Of course, why would they do that? And also, I was believing the media. The media was extensively saying every single day that he was a pedophile, even though he factually won his case. I allowed my image of Michael Jackson certainly to be corroded by the media throughout that time period. I will fully confess that. Now, I want to remind you, before we get back into Michael Jackson, what we learned in the Diddy documents, just to very quickly recap. Well, uh, if you read through them, again, these are all allegations, but you will come out of it understanding that there is allegedly some sort of a blackmail ring that is operating throughout Hollywood and that artists yeah. that are producing music are actually being controlled uh, via being induced into drugs at parties and then what takes place is they're being recorded and sometimes they're being recorded while they are in committing sexual acts with minors and something that we also saw in these docs is that these parties at least a lot of them are taking place in the virgin islands which again just makes you go what's happening here because jeffrey epstein obviously his home or he owned an island uh, that was just off the coast of saint thomas so we hear that again i also been jogging your memory about the bitcoin uh, millionaire who right before his death uh, found drowned accidental drowning even though he was fully clothed and had his wallet in his pocket tweeted that the cia and the Mossad were running a blackmail ring in the virgin islands something else that we learned in the daily lawsuit was that the media and the authorities are complicit so the ring has real power not imagined power again i am using the word alleged because this person despite having uh you know video evidence and had he has presented photographic evidence this has not yet gone through the court system yeah. and so we can't say that it's entirely true and I'd say the biggest point that we took away from these Diddy docs was that this ring, if you believe it exists, can and will murder people to protect themselves. Exactly. And he intimated this event that happened allegedly at a recording studio where Diddy and his son allegedly shot someone and it was covered up by the LAPD and then the media. All right, so within those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there is one man that is named as being the person that can do the cleanups, right? This is the guy that you are supposed to call if you get into any sort of a scenario. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. And upon information and belief, this is regarding the shooting that took place at Chalice Recording Studios. Again, he is alleging that Diddy and his son shot someone. And after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. 
the LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections wow. within law enforcement. So again, what we are seeing there is that you call this guy and this guy will make it disappear and the media will report whatever the incident is in a capacity that covers up the crime, allegedly. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. So I want to introduce you to and allow you to listen to Ian Carroll. He's an independent journalist that is investigating everything that is going on. And he explains that connection that Fahim has with Michael Jackson. Take a listen. So this new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation, very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security while he's running the sexual blackmail ring is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who before working for Diddy was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 21. And he was one of the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. And before we go to Michael Jackson, the most important part of the Diddy case to bring across is the fact that the record executives at the very top knew what P. Diddy was doing. They were attending the parties with underage girls where they were spiking drinks. They were deeply involved in Diddy's personal life and all evidence points to them supporting his operation or at the very least turning a blind eye to it. So yes, this is obviously huge. It's also potentially terrifying. And now if you want to be rational and use the rational side of your brain, you just go, okay, well, this could just be a coincidence, right? Like Fahim Muhammad, he is in security. And yes, he obviously uh, is high up in security. He was providing security to Michael Jackson. He wow, you guys, this is deeper than we thought. And uh, there's a lot of allegation coming out about Didi. And despite all of this, I don't know how to link the connection between Fahim, Mohammed, Michael Jackson, and Didi. But let me know what you guys think about this. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section and let's continue watching you guys. And he happened to die on his watch. Big deal, right? Big deal. Well, I think that would lead us to the question of who exactly is Fahim Mohammed, because that's kind of a a big first job to have. You're 21 years old and you're protecting the king of pop. What exactly are his qualifications? Let's go back to Ian Carroll and his reporting. And now here's the best part. Check this out. In This is in all of his bios, by the way, but we're pointing it out now. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a bachelor's of science degree in business administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing. Okay. Do you realize what's wrong with that yet? Anything coming to mind? When did Michael Jackson die? June 25th, 2009, Jackson died from cardiac arrest caused by a propofol and benzodiazepine overdose caused by his doctor apparently. Um, hold up, hold the phone. Pause. Why is a dude who just graduated college last year with a business and real estate degree, the head of security for the king of pop, for Michael Jackson, the most famous musician of all time? Yeah, that is remarkably suspicious. And if we had a media that was interested in actually presenting the truth and not just propagandizing on behalf of the state, they would probably explore and look deeper into who this character is. But of course, that's not what the media does. Instead, they are meant to convince people of certain narratives. And like I said in the past, I've been a victim to that. I was obviously very young when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, and I believed the media, which is why I was kind of stunned to kind of go back and revisit the Michael Jackson case. And Ian has extensive unpacked that revealing, and I did not know this, maybe perhaps because the media wasn't interested in telling us the end result. But yes, the FBI raided Michael Jackson's home. They poured through hours upon hours of the video footage that he had, other materials, documents that were in his house, uh, trying to find this connection uh, to Michael Jackson and potential child abuse. And what ended up being the result was that they could not find a single shred of proof that Michael Jackson had abused any children. 
And yet, despite this, the media convinced us that he was a pedophile, or maybe they didn't convince you, but they definitely did a good job convincing me that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. And to be clear, maybe it's perhaps the lack of evidence that was ever uncovered, Michael Jackson was found not guilty of all of the charges that were brought against him. But that didn't stop the media's obsessive attacks against him. They, they still wanted people to believe that this man was a bad individual. And so they shifted their claims and they started revealing in so many articles, so many front page news um, pieces were written to tell the masses that Michael Jackson was a raging anti-Semite. It is a fact, by the way, that Michael Jackson did keep a list of people in the industry that he said were his enemies, okay? On that list were people that all happened to be Jewish. So it was lawyer Gloria Allred, music exec Tommy Mottola, Rabbi Shmuley Botich, you may have heard of him, and I'm going to mention him later, Israeli illusionist Uri Geller, and also Michael Jackson's former manager, Dieter Weisner. Now, to be clear, it was Dieter himself that revealed that Michael Jackson had this list. But he says that Michael Jackson was just paranoid, that Michael Jackson thought that these industry people were all colluding to try to ruin his life and to take over his life. And again, that was just Michael Jackson being crazy and being a raging anti-Semite. Well, Ian Carroll also investigates those claims as well. Take a listen. And yes, Jackson did say that the Jews are we're probably referring to the Jews in the music industry are like leeches and that they took everything from them and that they did it on purpose. But when you look into those allegations or those insults, you realize that because of his will that was probably fake and filed right before his death, so the will was signed on July 7th in Los Angeles by three witnesses. But Jackson's family pointed out that he was in New York that day and there's video proving it. So they changed their story. But the witnesses definitely saw it and it was just in New York. So anyways, because of this will, John Bronca was put in charge of his estate, which included his net worth of $230 million, but far more importantly, his 50% share of Sony ATV worth $750 million. Yes, he was taking on Sony. He was going after the hand that feeds him. And when you look into John Bronca, in 2003, Jackson fired Bronca because he was siphoning money out of Jackson's accounts in collusion with Sony Music CEO Tommy Mottola wow. and funneling it through a bunch of offshore accounts in the Caribbean. John Bronca is Jewish and Tommy Mottola is also Jewish. Wow. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know any of that? Because I certainly didn't. I didn't realize that this was a conflict at the end of Michael Jackson's life, that suddenly they were alleging that he signed a new will and handed everything over to the very people that he was fighting, the very people that he was saying were colluding to take things from him, ended up, in the end, taking things from him, despite their remarkable mistake, saying that he signed this new will in a place that he simply wasn't at. So yes, Michael Jackson's estate was transferred over to specific individuals who happened to be Jewish. So what do we make of all of this? What do we make of all of this? What do you think about all of this? Well, I'm going to be honest with you that these claims keep coming up too often in Hollywood for me to be comfortable with it, right? Uh, we saw this, obviously, it's not just now the Diddy lawsuit. It's not just now Michael Jackson. We also have seen these claims uh, with Kanye West, notoriously, obviously, when he tweeted out, I'm about to go DEFCON 3 on some Jews, and the media freaked out, and people in the Jewish community were understandably very scared, not knowing what he meant. And I very much abstained from speaking much about the issue because people were so emotional that people couldn't hear, even if I had shared. You guys, what are your thoughts on this Michael Jackson case that is being linked to did it. Do you guys think there is a powerful ring that is behind Michael Jackson's death? Do you guys think Michael Jackson was truly murdered or he died a natural death? Because this is too much and I don't know what to make of it. No wonder Candice Owens says she's not going to cover this anymore. But leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and let's wrap this video up, you guys. And even when Kanye did share that he was speaking about specific, specific people in Hollywood that he believed were coming after him and were trying to control him. He actually named some of those individuals. He shared personal text messages uh, of a friend of his, a personal trainer to the stars, who again happens to be Jewish, who was threatening to put him in the hospital and to drug him against his will. 
Harley Pasternak is his name, and the media barely reported on those text messages that he shared publicly because, obviously, he was enemy number one. And here's what else I will tell you. When that Kanye situation went down, I was being threatened by a person named Rabbi Shmuley, <laughs> person that Michael Jackson put on his enemy list, a person that I had never heard of, was threatening me and saying that unless I came out and said things explicitly against Kanye, he would effectively ruin my life. He said that he would take out a front page ad and smear me as an anti-Semite. Yeah. And it wasn't just him, it was also his daughter, they were messaging me saying, don't mess with Jews, very bizarre stuff, and they have not stopped, to be clear. And him and his daughter have consistently pulled clips from this show, taken them out of context, and tried to convince Jewish people that I hate them. Candace Owens is gripped with a poisonous, almost pathological hatred of Jews. It's actually become very serious. It's actually almost frightening. When you see a woman like Candace Owens, blood libeling the Jewish people, yeah. like Candace yeah. Owens is losing it. Her anti-Semitism goes by the day. There is something really, truly wrong with Candace Owens. You guys know that I dislike liars and anti-Semites more than anything in the whole entire world. And here, we have a combination of both. Candace Owens simply will not stop defending Kanye West. It's like an obsession. If she's unable to genuinely and authentically condemn what Kanye said, it says a lot about her. If you come for us, we'll come back at you with everything that we have. I have heard from hundreds of you who feel so backstabbed and betrayed and disappointed in Candace Owens and others who defended, who enabled and encouraged Kanye West to continue spreading lies and venom and medieval Jewish hatred. Candace Owens posted a picture of my face and my name and my account to her over 4 million followers yesterday, many of whom are violence crazed and unhinged. You really went after Candace Owens today, why? Um, and that's a, a, a sliver of what she actually deserves. Um, she is such a liar. She is an anti-Semite. She hates Jews. She has a thing it's with Jews. incredible, isn't it? Like, and, weird. And while Jews are being attacked around the world, she finds it really necessary to spend her time, use her platform to defend and protect Kanye West while she talks a Hitler crap lover. about Kanye Israel. West is not just a anti-Semite. He's a Hitler lover. That's that's a different no, level altogether. Literally, literally, literally. Um, she is abominable. I actually am disgusted by her because she hates Israel. We are coming for you, Candace, on the media, on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, the more she defends Kanye West, the more we're going to call her out. Defending Kanye, we will come for you. Kanye. It's utterly ridiculous. It's insane. I know many Jewish people watch this show. Many Jewish people are my friends. And so what I believe is something that should be explored is whether or not what's happening is that just like within all communities, there are gangs, right? Gangs can form. We understand this. In the black community, we've got the Bloods and we've got the Crips. Well, imagine if the Bloods and the Crips were doing horrific things, murdering people, controlling people with blackmail. And then every time a person spoke out about it, the Bloods and the Crips would call those p people racist, we get the media to say those people were racist. Any person that was talking about a specific gang, a small group of people, would say, oh my God, no, 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 that's like slavery. You can't at all say anything bad about the Bloods and the Crips. Then the entire black community believed it and was scared and thought, oh my God, like is slavery actually coming back? It would be emotional manipulation because of course we would know that despite the fact that the Bloods and the Crips are black, that the majority of black people do not support the crimes that they have committed, the crimes that they continue to commit. It's a gang. But what if that is what is happening right now in Hollywood, if there is just a very small ring of specific people who are using uh, the fact that they are Jewish to shield themselves from any criticism? It's food for thought, right? And I think, again, there have been enough people that are speaking out about a ring in Hollywood, also a ring potentially in D.C., that we should start to ask those questions, all of us, Black, Spanish, Jewish, Chinese, Japanese, all Americans should want answers because this appears to be something that is quite sinister. I will put a button on this by bringing up some tweets from Meek Mill. He has been under fire. The black media, quote unquote black media, is saying that he is gay. And he tweeted this. I want to get citizenship in Ghana. 
America is made to tear black men down if you don't follow orders. Every black blog site enhanced that post to make me seem gay. I change laws for our people and I donate millions. They are designed to destroy the image of black leaders. It can't work with me though. You gotta really kill me. And I still will get bigger after death. This is God, not me, LOL. What do we say to that? Oh, well, what we always say every time a black man speaks out and says that he is being intentionally smeared in the press, we just say, well, Meek Mill must be paranoid. Meek Mill must be crazy. Again, how many people are we going to keep saying that about before we actually have a meaningful discussion about something that could be quite sinister happening in Hollywood? And yes, I think it is potentially so dangerous if these documents against Diddy are true that they will kill people before they allow that ring to be exposed. And that is all that I am going to say on that matter. Wow, you guys, that was a lot from Candice Owens. And one thing I have to say is that there is a dark and sinister agenda that is being pushed around. And Hollywood and the mainstream media are the people that are trying to push this agenda. Let me know your thoughts on this Michael Jackson and Diddy case. Do you guys think that Michael Jackson's death is questionable? And do you think that Diddy has a hand in it? Let me know in the comment section. And I really had fun reacting to Candice Owen. She spoke a lot in this video. And kudos to Candice Owens for always standing for the truth. I really enjoyed every minute of this particular video. If you guys totally enjoyed watching, give this video a massive thumbs up, comment, share, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.